Today we're going to demonstrate installing the West Cam partition for a GMC Chevrolet van for part number 1941904. The first thing we're going to do is open the package. The next step we're going to do after we open the carton is we're going to find the hardware kit for installing the partition. Open it up. Find the install instructions. The front cover of it is all the part numbers and the quantities. So what I'll do next is I'll unpackage this box and check off that I have all the parts. Page one, it gives me my tools required to do this job. Also with the tools required, in the instructions it says the trade in premium packages, spacing guidelines included at the end of this instructions. So the last three pages are the instructions for the spacing required for the different trade packages when installing the shelving. If you're just putting a partition in, those last three pages won't be required. Here today we have an extended GMC van with a sliding door. Instead of the regular barn doors, there's a modification to be done to the passenger side panel. What we need to do is notch this top corner to the crack. For the sliding door. To do that, we're going to measure from this edge over 11 and 3 quarters of an inch. And we're going to measure down 4 and 3 quarters. Put a straight edge on it. And we're going to notch out that corner. In order to notch that out easily, I'm going to use a five inch grinder with a slit disc, sometimes called a zip disc. Make sure you're wearing glasses, hearing protection. And now with that notched out, and with the edge of that little grinder, I cleaned up the little burrs on it, take away the sharp corners, we're ready to remove the PVC coating. This PVC coating is put on at the mill for us so that we can protect it through the process of manufacturing, packaging, and shipping. There's a PVC coating on both sides. As you can see, it just needs to be removed. Now that we've pulled the PVC, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the lower wing kits. Behind driver's side, you'll see that this kit goes in behind the panel, you'll notice at the top that there's two holes. One for on the top here and one for on the side so you can't get them upside down. Just like that and we'll bolt that in and we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. Again, we have two holes on the top. That's the top side. You put the panel in to the back side. One bolt through the side, four bolts through the front. The bolts go in from this side, the nuts are on the back. Next, we're going to install the latch mechanism, which is a locking out handle on the central panel swing door. Make sure that you put it on the proper side. As you can see, this is the hinge side, and this would be the cab side. The L handle goes on, and there's two little screws with rockers heads and two self-locking nuts. 
we're going to install the locking cam. What you're going to do is you're, you're going to take the handle from the cab side and you're going to turn it horizontally towards the driver's seat. You're going to put the cam on with the rounded face facing the cargo area. So when you turn that down, that is in its locking mechanism. And then you're going to take a 332nd Allen wrench and you're going to tighten that up. Then you're going to put the inside opener, I'll handle one from the cargo area, and you're going to tighten that up with a 532nd Allen. With the handle now securely installed, we're going to install the three metal black powder coated hinges only on the door to begin with. The hinges go on like this. You'll notice that there's holes on the back side. The holes on the back side is so that you can put a socket in there and turn them easily. So for those that are unfamiliar with insert nuts and the tool to install them, I'm gonna do a little sample of an installation and show you how it works. In every hardware kit that we produce, we come up with the bolt, the washer, the install tool. Then we put in the insert nut. We drill a hole, which is a 3 8 hole in the van body to put the anchors in. I'll hold that with a 9 16 wrench. And I'll turn that in with a 7 16 nut driver. You can see how securely that anchors that into a plate. Now we have a proper anchor to put in a, a quarter inch bolt. For those that are installing a lot of nut certs, it's worthwhile buying a pneumatic, an air, or a cordless insert tool. It's faster and it's really easy for getting into tight spots. Again, you have your 3 8 hole. You pull the trigger one way, tightens it up, and the trigger the other way. Simple. Very worthwhile to you. Next on page four, I'm going to go into the van and on the top rib where this partition mounts to, I'm going to drill out the check marks to three eighths of a hole and I'm going to install the nut certs. Okay, so if you have a sliding door cargo van instead of the barn door cargo van, there's going to be some options for you to do. One of them is that you have to pull the plastic trim off the inside. Most of these sliding door cargo vans are really designed for the uh, uh, passenger van. So we're going to pull this off. This will come off and stay off. Probably one of the most important tools that you'll use is a drill stop. This is a 3 8 drill bit. This is a 3 8 drill stop. You can buy them at any local tool or hardware store. You slide your drill stop over top of your drill bit. Make sure when you tighten up the sit screw that you're sitting on the land of the drill. Tighten that up. Leave yourself a half to three quarters of an inch. And when you're drilling into the body of the van, you'll never go too far. For example, if I was drilling into this rib to mount a bracket for shelving, and I didn't have a drill stop on there, and I went further than an inch and a half, I would dimple the outside of this van. So you could do a lot of damage without having a drill stop. Most important tool. With the drill template that we supply in the kit, place it in with the P behind the passenger seat and the D behind the driver's seat. It fits over top of the seat studs. 
slip it over top of the holes. It's just as simple as that. And mark out your drill locations for your bottom anchor for your partition. Next, we're going to install the driver's side and passenger side top strip. Into the holes that we, we drilled the 3 8 we've installed the insert nuts. Putting the strip up and installing the hole. This Milwaukee one inch hole saw with a quarter inch bit, something that I've done is I've ground off most of the teeth. Then I've taken and sharpened the edge of it and turned it into more of a, um, a hole punch than a hole saw. What that does is it keeps a lot of that burlap that's in the matting from getting tangled in there. You'll find it's difficult enough to get it out anyway. Even pushing it out with a screwdriver, I generally end up getting it out part way and pulling the rest out with a pair of needle nose pliers. Because this van has a rubber floor mat, we're gonna drill coring out these holes in the mat to allow for us to get down to the bare metal of the van to put our insert nuts in. One inch hole saw, quarter inch bit. Once you've cored out your matting, you'll find this matting sticks really good to the drill bit. If you use a Makita or a Milwaukee hole saw, it has a large hole in the side, which makes it easy to get in there to push that out. If you continue to just keep doing that and pushing all the matting down in here and not pulling this out every time, you will find that you created a big problem in getting this out of there at all. You have to clean it out every time. Now that we've installed the upper top strips, we're going to use a 3 8 drill bit, again with the drill bit stop. And I'm going to drill out the holes that are at, at quarter inch right now with the 1 inch hole saw. We'll record out the mat. I'm going to drill them out with 3 8 okay. Now that I've drilled those holes out with 3 8 I can install the nut inserts using the tool provided, which is a throwaway tool when you're done with the installation. Put it into the hole, hold the tool with a 9 16 wrench. Securely fastened. Now that we have the quarter inch nut certs installed in the floor, we're gonna put the spacers in. The spacers are, be are because it has a rubber mat. If it didn't have a rubber mat, I would not be using these spacers that are provided in the kit. Put them into the hole. Tap them down securely. Okay, the next step is to put in our driver's side and passenger side panel. In order to do that, we're going to set it in place and we're going to mark the plastic trim on the B-pillar to show where we need to cut the B-pillar so that we can get contact with our lower wing kit into our post. Standing the partition in place, I don't have any bolts installed. All I want to do is get the measurement of where I'm going to cut the plastic trim on this B-pillar to remove the plastic trim so I can do a proper installation. I'm going to remove the plastic trim about a half an inch above our wing kit. And I'm going to take my felt marker and I'm going to run it down the edge, all the way down the edge of the plastic trim. Now when I pull that away, that's the piece that I need to remove. Now that we've marked out and removed the plastic trim, we're going to cut it out. 
There's several different ways you can do that. You can do it with an X-Acto knife. You can do it with a jigsaw. I find that using the same tool, the zip disk works great. Now that we've removed the trim so that we can get metal against metal to put our screws in, the one thing you want to make sure of is that you take the wiring harness and you push it back out of the way. There's a metal tab down here. What you want to do is push that back out of the way. Now we've got a clear space to mount our passenger side partition to. Now I've installed the three anchor bolts at the bottom of the panel, the three anchor bolts at the top of the panel, and the only ones left to do is to put the three self-tapping screws into the V-pillar. As you can see, we've cut away all that trim now, and we have this panel up against the metal where we need to be. Now that we have the passenger side panel installed, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the holes that are in this panel. As you notice down here, there's a funny slot, holes for a bracket. This is for relocating the tire jack and tools from the rear of the van to behind the seat into this location. This gives more room in the van for cargo and some uh, upfitters do require that. Also, you'll notice that we've got holes here for cylinder mounts and also holes here for hooks and hangers, pre-punched. Now that we have the passenger side panel complete, we're gonna go over and duplicate the same thing on the driver's side. With the driver's side partition installed, we're now gonna install the center door. To do that, we've already remounted the hinges. We're gonna set this into place. I'm gonna pivot the hinges into the holes and locate them. I'm going to close the door, lock it in place. Next, I'm going to go inside the cab. I'm going to put the nut into the 10 millimeter socket. And by hand, through the back holes, I'm going to start these, then I'm going to tighten them up. After I've done that, I'm going to come back. I'm going to check the mechanism. I'm going to make sure the key's locking the latch. It's adjustable. If I want to adjust it by using a 332nd Allen, I can make that adjustment here to bring this in and out for the tension that I need on that. Now with the door installed and the latch adjusted, it completes the install. Something to make sure when you open it, leave the key in the latch. Something you'd like to do before it leaves for the customer is just give it a wipe down. Takes the fingerprints off of it and makes it look nice and shiny.